I want to give a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Therapy isn't something to run away from, it's a vessel to run towards. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online, so break out your comfies. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time. Any time! and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. No more fumbling to get a session on the calendar. You schedule based on when the time is right for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. Therapy changed my life for the better, pun intended. And with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash rocky. That's betterhelp.com slash rocky. Okay, fine. We'll kick it off talking about Aubrey and Kung Fu Kenny. You know me. I love peace. But I also love these men. You know, I almost said I love these men. But let me say, after following this beef, if any of the shit that either of them is saying about the other one is true, then I want to go on record and say I'm a big fan of these men as lyricists. How about that? Let's start with the negatives of this historic rap battle, shall we? The negatives are, again, if whatever either of them is saying about the other one is true, fellas, 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 do we have some healing to do? We can never evolve as a people if you guys are being mean and abusive and ugh, pervy behind the scenes. Everybody, I'm sorry. Just men. Men, take your right hand and tap your pointer finger and your thumb together and do the same thing with your left hand. Now take your fingies and grab your little earlobes and pull them down gently and listen up. Don't let go until I say. Stop putting your fucking hands on women, you angry, scared little boys. Real men do not do that shit. A real man protects those who are physically, and I do only mean physically, weaker than him. Putting your hands on a woman makes you a fucking bitch, Grammy or not. And attempting, entertaining, acting on any blanket of sexual activity with someone that you know is a minor, well, that makes you sick in the fucking head. And none of us should be putting bitches or sickos on a pedestal. Okay? (sighs) You can now let go of your ears. So, oh gee willikers, fellas. I hope both your allegations are just little untrue jabs that you said to get some airplay. Now let's talk about the fun part of the battle. They gave us a little excitement. Drake haters got to sit upon Kendrick's balls, forgetting about the years of bops that this biracial Canuck gave us, as if he didn't coin YOLO, eh? And Kendrick fans got some well-oiled lyrics served on a silver platter, and everyone's like, where's Cole? J. Cole is somewhere protecting his peace and showing the world that vulnerability is the sexiest diss track you can drop. And I get it. We're animals. We like a little scrap. We want to have the killer lyrics. I'm no fool. I listen to Family Matters the second it dropped like, damn. Is Kendrick dead? Did he just finish Kendrick with this clever song? And then I listened to My Kitchen Table again. And again. Only to have K.Dot come out with Meet the Grams not even a half hour later. God 
damn. And just a sidebar, it was giving Stan, right? Meet the Grams was giving Stan. My teeth can't go the one that I, I, and I can't see at all. You know what I'm trying to say. It was giving Stan the letter writing. Stan walked so Meet the Grams could slaughter. When I'm asked, where were you when the fastest diss track response was dropped? I was at my kitchen table enjoying a snack. Anyway, these guys' families have been dragged. Drake's security got shot at his house. I don't know if it was an inside job. I don't know by who, but that's a real bummer to be shot, even if it's an inside job. And really, the whole thing is kind of this big distraction while college kids are getting ripped by the hair through their campuses. But we want an escape! So with that being said, I appreciate them both being nice with the pen again. And I hope with all of my being, truly, that the accusations against either of them aren't true. But you know how men be out here menin. Men be menin! If you listening got some pleasure out of this exchange between two millionaires for the past few months, then it's your job to make a homeless person a sandwich. It's your job to give $5 to a subway performer or a GoFundMe that touches your heart because frankly, after all this entertaining hate that has been spewed into our ears, it is now our job to clean up the park. Welcome to the Rocky Rundown, where you get to learn a little bit about my week. Party God Squad, hello! Did you have a good week? I hope it was as cute as you are, you little sugar plum fairy! My past couple of weeks have been truly great. I celebrated my birthday. Thank you to each and every person who called, texted, got me weed, and celebrated with me. I'll never forget it. I was even gifted a life-sized cutout of myself, so I'll have to get bigger hats moving forward as my head did indeed grow three sizes that day. My friend and I are always celebrating our birthday together, and this year to kick it off, we decided to go to brunch, just the two of us, at a place called American Brass. I can't recommend it enough. Great food, great service, great location, Long Island City. If you want a hot spot with delicious foods and drinks, please go to American Brass. When we sat down, they immediately asked us, do you want an espresso martini? Now you know me, I'm a tequila girl through and through, but there was something about the cadence in which she asked if we wanted them that had me absolutely convinced that, yeah, girl, I do want one. And then we had another one. And then at our party afterwards, people were randomly drinking them. And then I'm seeing them all over everyone's Instagram story. Then, a few days later, I went to hang out with a friend and he said he had just come back from having espresso martinis. So, like, what's up? It's just zesty chocolate milk for grown-ups that gets you drunk. I for sure like them, but don't be fooled into thinking you're bougie because you're drinking them. Honey, it's you who for alcoholics. Nevertheless, espresso martinis are having their moment. I'm also having a moment. I want to deliver a PSA. Don't hate your body. I know it sounds so cliche, but we are so nitpicky about all the roles and lines and what's acceptable for a beach body. I say this because summer is around the corner. And I saw a picture of myself from five years ago, and I was absolutely in a bikini, posing on the beach, on my knees, eating bread to the face. And while I looked at this picture, I thought to myself, oh my god, look at this sexy little hoochie mama wolfing down carbs in a sand dune. Disclaimer, it was the Rockaways, not a real sand dune. And looking hot to trot, might I add. When I took that picture, I remember thinking I wasn't in shape enough. My tummy wasn't tight enough. How could I ever post this? I posted it anyway. You don't even know you're in a hot body sometimes, so just assume right now your body is hot and enjoy it. Stretch it, rub it, share it with the worthy. Share it with the worthy. Netflix is getting into roasts. 
They roasted Tom Brady last Sunday, and I tuned in because I love comedy, and I love a roast. I love a roast. Someone tried to roast me the other day and ended up getting pot roasted. What's pot roasted, you ask? In this scenario, it means my retort absolutely scorched them. Thus, they were roasted by a pothead. Pot roasted. Coming to free form this fall. Nikki Glaser was the best of the night, hands down. She was undeniable. She got a standing ovation. Go the fuck off, Nikki. You destroyed. And what do the guys on stage have to say about her? And I'm not making this a battle of the sexes. I think male comedians are funny. Tony Hinchcliffe was undeniably funny as well, but Nikki was so smooth. Like I was saying, the guys, when they got up there, it's the roaster's job to also roast people on stage if you don't know Roast 101. And the guys, well, they're talking about her looks. Ugh, she looks pretty beautiful, fellas. And any of those men on stage would be, oh, so lucky if she even flirted with them. Never mind, let them enter her. Then they called her a whore. Oh, okay, she's had the same boyfriend forever, but sure, okay, she's a whore. And even if she was or is a whore, why is that even a roast? I'm pretty sure she's not. And I'm also pretty sure we can do better than whore when writing jokes. Or maybe they can't. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm missing something with the whole calling women whores bit. It's weak dick energy, not small, not little dick, it's weak dick. So this is not a size queen thing because even the anacondas are capable of behaving like garter snakes on the loose, okay? So this is just a public service announcement. It's that calling women whores in jokes is weak dick energy. And boys, you're hilarious. It's likely you wouldn't be there if you weren't. So retire the horror jokes, fellas. You're better than that. And stretch that pen the way you stretch those hairlines. Ben Affleck came out and spoke at the roast, and he had a lot of passion. It seemed more like a rant than a roast, which makes sense because if I were Ben Affleck, I'd have a lot to rant about too. But while I looked at him, I thought, he looks like he's hiding a secret, and he's just going to spill it at any moment. You suspect. Yeah, you. Come on, guys. That's goodwill hunting. Keep up. Let me tell you something. You suspect. Yeah, you. I've been thinking a lot about reverse weddings. I guess the word I'm looking for is divorce. A lot of people, present company included, love a wedding. Open bar. Dancing. The room is likely filled with great people that you know as well. Awesome food. And the most important part on paper, standing behind two people you love to help guide them into the next chapter of their life. Marriage. Here. Here's a crock pot. Or a check. Or a trip. Or hell, even a cigar. But what about when the party's over? What about when till death do us part turns into, oh, we gon' part. Here you have marriage, one of the most fun and exciting moments of your life. You've got someone that says, I want to be with you and only you while we spin through our galaxy on a rock and see what's next. That is probably really reassuring to people getting married. You picked me. You chose me and I'm choosing you. Coupled with people gathering for you and your partner telling you you look amazing and showering you with money and material things. People flew in to get happy with you. But what about if the hard shit comes? Huh? How many of those wedding guests can you count on then? Hypothetically, let's say 50. I'm lowballing, not to be confused with weak dicking. Lowballing is something else. Let's just say you've got 50 guests at your wedding. Even split 25 you, 25 your partner. And all of those people stepped up and showed you the kind of love they showed you on your wedding day. And you were giving them a re-gifted toaster oven because you got two at your wedding. What if all those guests stepped up and helped their friends who were getting divorced transition post-marriage? Supported the Your Marriage is Over registry. Imagine how much easier this world would feel. But most people run from those whose marriages fail, like it's contagious. 
90% of those wedding guests scamper when the real shit goes down and they don't have the option to macker in it or wait through it. I'm not saying you gotta be up in people's personal business prodding the whys and hows of the marriage is ending, but you looked so happy. I'm just shining light on it. If we normalized helping people at their lowest when they invited us into their world at their highest, we might be able to help them into the next healing phase with some grace. And I know that sounded like I just got divorced and I'm waiting for y'all to cut the check for moi. But I didn't. I'm single and slithering into summer like I just attended a divorce party. Cautious and full of appetizers. I just felt passionate because sometimes passion is all we have. And weed. We also have weed. That brings us to Rocky's highest thoughts. My most stoned thoughts of the week. Number one. Bro, always be cautious of what you see on TV. Remember they once showed an indigenous man crying on the side of the highway with a single tear streaming down his cheek because a careless person threw their trash on the side of the road? First of all, who pitched this commercial? Who pitched it? And second, it ain't working because people are still out here littering and I know you saw the commercial. Number two, someone gave me a black and white cookie for my birthday. And I started calling it a biracial treat because I'm a biracial treat. Number three, I want to have conversations with people who are conscious. If you don't understand that sentence, that's okay. You're probably not conscious. And I hope one day you do. And if you understood that sentence, oh my God, how fun is it to be conscious? You get it. And number four, the audacity of paper straws to exist. When all this stuff is happening right under our noses, we shouldn't also have to be subjected to our drink crumbling like feta cheese without the flavor in your mouth. Bamboo is a thing. It grows really fast, and we should just be making straws out of that. If I'm wrong about that, Greta Thunberg hit me up. And Greta Gerwig hit me up too. I would love to be in a Barbie sequel. And I want to play superhero Barbie. Was there a superhero Barbie? Party God Squad, I hope you have been enjoying the episodes in which I recap other people's wild night stories. It has been so much fun for me. And I would love, love, love if you wanted to have your wild night story retold on here. If you think you have a wild night story worthy of retelling, please email me at wildnightswithrocky at gmail.com. You can also hit me up in my DMs. They're always open. Unless you make it weird, don't make it weird. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. You can follow me at Wild Nights with Rocky on TikTok and Instagram, at Wild Nights Pod on Twitter. You can also subscribe to the show on YouTube, if that's your thing. If you want to support the show with your wallet, you can subscribe to my Patreon for two or five dollars a month. A big thank you and a future thank you to everyone who's written and everyone who will write a review when this episode is over. It really does make a difference. And until next time, stay wild.